So, <clears throat> finishing up, Ephesians chapter 4. Here's, now, now I'm, okay, we're known for telling people how to do things, okay? Not just you need to do it. I've heard so many sermons on the renewed mind without them ever telling me how to do it. I had to actually go in and find out for myself what the Bible said about renewing the mind. So, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. He says here, that you put off concerning the former lifestyle, the old man. Put off the old man. Why? Because that's not who you are. Okay. Now, if you put off, notice, if you put off the old man, that means he's the outer man. That means he's the flesh, the carnal. Do you get that? That's who you put off. Now watch. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Not just in your mind, but in the spirit of your mind. And that you, you, put on the new man. Put off the old, put on the new. Now, notice, the new has been put in, but now you also have to put him on. In other words, he takes the place of the carnal flesh man. You got that? Which, after God, is created in righteousness and true holiness. This is what you're supposed to put on. So if you're going to put him on, the new man, which is created after God in righteousness and true holiness, then that means that the outer man is going to start looking righteous and holy. That's why he said lift up holy hands. He didn't say lift up holy spirit hands. He said lift up holy hands. That means you're doing the right things. Does that make, you make, does that make sense? He says, wherefore, putting... Now, notice, he's telling you how to put on the new man and how to put off the old man. Putting away, that's putting off, putting away. Lying. Speak truth, okay? Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry. Oh, look at there. You can be angry and sin not. Just don't sin. Jesus got angry, didn't sin. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. In other words, as soon as it's over, deal with it. Don't wake up tomorrow still mad. Because what if you don't? Wake up, I mean. Neither give place to the devil. Notice it's all in here with the putting away lying, speak truth, right? Now watch this. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needs. Now imagine, look what he said. He says, put this off, don't do this. Matter of fact, if you used to steal, don't steal anymore. Go to work. Now, why are you working? Notice he doesn't say, go to work so you can have what you need. He says, no, go to work. He says, labor with your hands so you can have that which to give. See, think about this. If God is your source, then God meets your needs. So if you work, you should work so that you have something to give. Do you get that? God will take care of your needs. So if you work, work to give. And it's amazing. If you work to give, you can't give without God giving more back. So he's got you, right? While you're working, just so you, imagine if you could take your paycheck and give it somewhere to help some organization or something that is actually feeding people, helping people, doing good, you know, helping really. And think about that. J.C. Penney did that, the original, the guy, not the company, right? He did that, started out, his mom taught him to tithe, and he started out tithing 10 cents on every dollar. Then as he got older, and went, he kept doing that until when he died, he was living off of 10% and tithing 90% and gave millions. R.G. Uh, R.G. Letourneau, yeah, did the same thing. There are several people that do that. They have proven this. And these, listen, these are not giants of faith. This isn't Wigglesworth and Lake and people like that. These are businessmen. Ended up living off of 10%, tithing 90 Imagine that. And, and, and living good off of 10%. Living better off of 10% than most people could have lived off the 90%. So he says, now watch this. In the middle of all this, he says in verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Nothing corrupt, nothing bad, nothing corrupt. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a word also used about um, Lazarus, 
when he was in the grave four days, when his body started to corrupt, okay? Means rotten, filthy, not good. He says, but that which is good to the use of edifying, building up, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Imagine if that's all you did was say things that ministered grace and lifted, edified people. No, nothing corrupt. He says, now watch, verse 30, tied right with it. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Don't grieve him. How do you grieve him? Corrupt communication come out of your mouth, speaking things that don't edify. That's how you grieve him. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Notice all those things are usually identified by somebody speaking. Yes, sir. Verse 32, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Imitators is the way the Greek reads. And walk in love. We're to imitate God by walking in love. That's that's the imitation it's talking about. Now, we should imitate him in every other area, too. But if you imitate by walking in love, God is love. As Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Now, that doesn't sound like grace says it's okay to do. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Imagine if what you sat around thinking about was just giving thanks to God. Taking note of what he's done for you, done in you, done with you. For this you know, no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Now, that's pretty plain. Now, he says, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things, what things? The things we just gave you the list of, cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Because of those things, the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship, listen, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That means speak against them. You don't participate. You don't put up with them. You speak against them. That's not right. Think about that. Well, live and let live. That's not my business. Yeah, it might not be. But if you see the works of unrighteousness, the works of darkness going on, and it's seducing people to that type of activity, you need to speak up. Now, that doesn't mean you always look in everybody else's business, not taking care of your own. It means clean up your own backyard first. Get the the beam out of your own eye before you start talking about everybody else's splinter. Verse 